Hi, my name is Vincent Steiner, and welcome to another installment of Chalkboard Time. This episode is the, the uh, capitalist uh, notion that if I work hard enough, I'll be able to get nice things. These are the type of people, well, you just call them socialists, who think that people are born into this world with some sort of God-given right to possessions. They don't seem to take into account that, you know, for that hard work that goes into all the production, they're not just going to do it for free. That's, that just isn't how the world works. And that's sadly the way these people think. Um, they seem to think they're born into this world with a God-given right. Judging by his logic, you won't have to work. You don't have to work. But then, how else are things produced? But then they come across the argument where they say, okay, well, things are produced... Um, by people doing things uh, for free, that there will be no money and we'll just produce everything for free. It will all be for the greater benefit of the greater number. You know that these people will work their arse off, risking their life in dangerous jobs, they'll work their arse off building a house for the sake of other people. So basically he's, he's essentially saying he doesn't want to work hard. He thinks it just falls out the sky and just lands at his feet. He's complaining about working hard, but he seems to forget the very fact that it requires hard work in order to produce such goods for him to have in the first place. So basically this comes from your boss telling you, hey, you work hard for me, I'll give you food and maybe something a little extra, you know, some more spending money. No. The capitalist does not tell the worker that if they work hard enough they'll give them food. That's not down to the capitalist. It's not down to the capitalist to decide what these workers get in terms of, you know, their food. That's down to the consumer themselves to freely choose what they want to buy. You know, it's not a case of if you work for me, uh, I, I'll give you Food. I'll give you the food. That's that's not how a free market works. The free market is down to the consumer themselves. And this just shows that, you know, these people don't even understand supply and demand. Capitalism is not pro-business. It's pro-consumer. Because it's the consumer that dictates and decides and freely chooses what they want. In other words, if I go into a shop, I'm the one as the consumer, who would choose what I want to buy. It's not down to a, a business owner. It's not It's not like a, a consumer walks into a shop and the, the business owner says, buy that. That's not how it works. That's not how the world works. It's not how the market works. The consumer goes into a shop and buys what they want. And if that business cannot provide for what they want, if the business does not have it in supply, and their competition does, this consumer demand is putting pressure on the businesses to provide, because if they do not, their competition will wipe the floor with them. So it's not a case of a, a capitalist business owner says that if you work hard for me, you know, I will provide you with the food. No. This capitalist business owner is under pressure to provide you with good paid wages because in a competitive market economy if you chose not to if you chose to underpay your workers then those workers have the free choice to go and start up their own business or if they don't go and start up their own business they have the choice to go and work for their competition well let's just look at market research for example okay a business in competition sees that that company is underpaying their workers. And this business thinks to themselves, 
you know something? They're underpaying their workers, that's not benefiting their business. I'll take advantage of this and I'll pay my workers higher paid wages. And why will they do that? Because people would, you know, favour that company to work for. That does not mean to say that just because this company is now paying out higher wages that it's going to be less of a benefit to them. It's going to be more of a benefit to them because the hard the hard work that, you know, this company benefits from is essentially going to lead to more produce and more consumers coming to their business. The company who is basically going to underpay their workers, who the hell would want to work for a company such as that? They simply wouldn't. They would lose their workers. This flawed logic behind the entire argument of the capitalist is the one that decides uh, for the worker what they are going to be um, getting at the end of it. No, the capitalist does not decide. The only thing the capitalists do is pay their wages for their hard work. And it's then down to that consumer themselves to go and buy whatever they so choose. Or they, they may not want to buy, they may, they may want to invest their money. They seem to be under the impression that, you know, these capitalists force them to work for them. That's not how a capitalist economy works. You're not forced to work for a company. You're not a robot that you know, they can press a button in the back of you to say, you know, you you must work for my company. That's not how the world works. They can easily just go and work for their, their own company or, you know, they can go and work for another company as they so choose. Now, before anybody says anything, there's no such, wor there's no such thing in this world as an economy of perfection. There's always going to be corruption. There's always going to be exploitation. But the only thing that can destroy that, co that exploitation is competition in the marketplace. Government does not help the problem. The only thing government does is it increases the problem. You know, maybe you want a nice you know, new sports car, the latest Lamborghini. Sounds nice, right? So, you decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to work, I'm going to uh, go my factory job, I'm going to you know, go there, I got to think about my car, I want that car, I'm going to produce twice as more, I put more output. Two years later, well, you still don't have that car. Upon review of why this is, you take a closer look at the system. So you decide, hey, I'm going to take a closer look at this. First you notice your boss has that sports car you wanted and he's way richer. This is all because you gave more and he was able to buy that sports car from the products you produced and he gave you that excess amount of money. So we can look at the entire argument behind this whole sports car or whatever. Let's just say, for example, this was a sports car that just came out and you notice this trend yourself and this is all about trickle down. Um, basically... A new product comes out and the product is really, really expensive and perhaps only the, you know, rich people can afford it at first. And over a certain period of time, the cost of that um, produce begins to lower so that it's more affordable for your average person. The reason why this happens is because the more that you produce of that product, the more there is in supply, the more there is um, for people to buy. So the more that you produce of the goods and services, right, the more the cost of the product drives down in cost. So let's say, for example, this business owner or whatever is an, an owner of a car company. Let's just say, for example, in a free market, there's a car o a car company owner and he gets his workers to produce um cars in over like i don't know a couple of decades uh, or so and and so many of these cars have been produced the more those cars are produced 
the lower the cost of those cars are going to be because the more there is in supply for people to to basically buy. What he doesn't understand is the very fact that although at first the rich person is able to afford it, at a later point in time this product is becoming more affordable because of the hard work that they've um the hard work they they've put in. Because of the hard work they've put in in terms of producing more, it pays off years later because the cost of the car is driving down due to more of those cars being out on the road. It's simple. It's supply and demand. The more that you produce and supply, the lower the cost of the, the product is. So, really what he's saying is, is just complete and utter silly nonsense. Because he clearly doesn't understand um, supply and demand. He doesn't understand that the more that you produce, the lower the cost of the um, product is going to be. So, in other words, his argument is just deeply flawed. He's basically trying to claim that, you know, um, it's just the capitalist business owner that will be able to afford it and that the hard work that these, um, you know, company employees put in, they gained nothing from it. If they gained nothing from it, why is the cost of the product driving down the more that they produce? Now imagine this happening over and over again in a nearly endless cycle. You are trapped in this. There's nothing you can do about it. The system is rigged this way so that you always provide for the rich elite. This way, well, you're just a slave. And actually, there's a term for this. It's called wage slavery. A system of where you're always doomed to just provide for a man above you and get little out of return. Well, we've already been through that. Um, this whole thing about wage slavery. It's like I say, you end up being the employee of a company and your hard work that you put in, the more that you produce of that good, um, the lower the cost of that product is going to be. Prime example, just like the analogy of the bottle of water, you stand in the middle of the Sahara Desert with a bottle of water. How much is that bottle of water going to be worth to your entire life? It's going to be worth everything to you because it's all you have to basically survive upon in order to reach safety. So, you take the same bottle of water, you stand in the middle of Scotland, you stand in the middle of Scotland with the bottle of water, how much is it worth to you then? You've got flowing crystal clear rivers, you've got waterfalls, you've got lochs, you have water everywhere. You can easily pour the water out and refill it yourself. Why? Because there's plenty of it in quantity. In other words, what I'm telling you is, is that the more you have of something in supply, this is what supply and demand is really all about, the more that you have of something in supply, the lower the cost. This is the very reason why your paper money is devaluing. Because the more that they print of that paper currency in circulation, the lower the value of the currency is going to be. Because there's more paper in circulation, the more the you know the more the inflation of that currency is, the lower the valuation of the currency. Because the more you have of the paper in circulation, the less value that currency holds. Now take that same analogy and stick that inside produce. The more that these workers produce of these goods and services, the more cars that this company produces, the lower the car, the, the, the lower the cost of those, you know, Lamborghinis are going to cost. Because there's more of them in supply. This is the very reason why when you look at a city such as Detroit, where it ended up in bankruptcy, it ended up in a severe economic mess, 
Why do you think their house costs are so low? Their house costs are so low because who wants to live there? There's not many people right now who want to go and live there. They don't feel secure. Thus there's, a, there's less of a demand for, you know, for going to live there. But there's a high supply of those houses available. Therefore the cost is lower. It's the same principle with produce. The more that you produce, the lower the cost. So, the employees who have been working hard and producing more of those cars, the more that they produce, the car is basically dropping in cost. To say that the, the, the cost of that Lamborghini dropping in cost because the more that they produce from their hard work, to say that's not benefiting consumers, you can kindly kiss my backside. Thanks for watching. Uh, I plan to uh, make more of these, so subscribe if you want to see more. So anyway people, I hope you've enjoyed my video. I hope it's been educational for yourself. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask and comment below. But really, all you have to understand is the more regulated your economy is, the less that your country is going to produce. Because your businesses are over-regulated. In other words, by over-regulating businesses, you have less business freedom to produce more. Why? Because you have something called quantity controls. <laughs> that means the government is limiting how much your businesses can produce and because of that, your costs are sky high. Why? Because when you lay on quantity controls, you're limiting businesses from how much they can produce. That shoots the cost up because at the end of the day, the less that you produce, the higher the cost is going to be for your consumers. What benefit did that have to consumers? Nothing. The less regulation in the economy that you have, the more freedom businesses have to produce as much as they like, and whatever they like. And that business freedom that gives them the freedom to produce more of their goods and services drives the cost down. And what does that do? That makes things more affordable for the average person of society. Thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And cheers for watching.